Hello and welcome to My Way or the AI Way. I'm Scott Davison. I'm on a mission to master AI and I'm using this podcast to share ideas on how AI can be used in life and business. Today, I want to show you how AI can help you learn and retain information more efficiently. And I'm going to show you two AI tools that can help with that process. So if you're a student who needs to study information, or if you're someone like me who just likes learning new information, this is going to be a really valuable episode. So stick around to learn how AI can help supercharge your learning ability. Now, if we think about studying or learning new information, there's usually a few steps to that process, starting with research and then reading and retention. Let's call those the three R's and AI can help with each stage of that process. So the first tool I want to talk to you about today is a tool that can help with research. Now, most of the AI tools out there can now do what's called deep research, but the OG in this space is a tool called Perplexity. So I'm going to show you how Perplexity is a really good tool for helping you research a new topic. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate this on my screen share here, but if you're listening to the audio version of this, don't worry, I'll talk you through it. Perplexity, you can go to perplexity.ai and use the web-based version. You don't necessarily need to download any apps. And there's a free version of Perplexity that will give you most of the functionality you need. On first look, it looks a lot like any other um, AI tool in that you simply ask a question into a chat box and it goes off and performs the research for you. And Perplexity is designed specifically for doing deep research, going off, searching the internet and coming back with a curated list of references. Now, whilst it looks a lot like ChatGPT and it is based on just asking it a question or a prompt, as always, there's an art in prompting and the better the question you ask, the better the result you will get. And many of the same principles that apply on ChatGPT or the other LLMs also apply for perplexity. So it's good to give it context and it's good to specify the outcome that you're looking for. But there are some subtle differences such as when you're using ChatGPT, you'll often use like a chain of thought prompt where you're asking one question, then another question, then another question. That doesn't really work very well with perplexity. It confuses the research functionality of perplexity. So if you're not used to using perplexity yet, but you are more familiar with say ChatGPT, what you can actually do is ask ChatGPT to help you write a prompt for perplexity. So in my example, I wanted to do some research into the history of Colombia. This is a country I'm very interested in, and it's also a country I'm going to be visiting next year. So I thought, let's put my student hat on again, pretend I'm writing a thesis on the history of Colombia, and let's really do some deep research and learning in this space of Colombian history. First step was to get ChatGPT to help me write a prompt that would give me a good base of information that I could start to use to learn about this topic. And I've pasted that prompt into perplexity. It takes quite a while to go off and do that research. So here's one I prepared earlier. And you can see the prompt here. Relatively short, but it's got all the key points I needed. So create a graduate level research starter pack on the history of Colombia. And I've asked it to return a concise summary, 250 words, and then a curated bibliography with 15 to 20 high quality, long form sources grouped by era. And for each source to list the title or the year type, so journals, articles, reports. And I've asked it to prioritize peer reviewed journals, academic press books, and major government reports. And in this case, I've said it can include English or Spanish language works and to favor items published between 2000 and 2025. That's a reasonably detailed prompt, probably more than just asking, give me some information on the history of Colombia, but I'm more likely to get a, a valuable result using that prompt. And here's the result here so to come back with a summary of Colombia's history, like a three paragraph summary, which is really good. It's included the curated bibliography with several books, reports, and articles that I can go off and read, and it's provided the links, so the citations for all of that information. And at the end, it summarized some of the, some of the key notes. So it's already done a really good job of sort of summarizing the information, but more importantly, it's given me a long list of resources and references that if I really want to study the topic, I can go off and read those or go into them in more detail. So if you are a student or if you're looking to do research, then perplexity is a really good tool to be using for that task. But it's one thing to have all that information, 
let's move on to the next step in the process, which is reading and retaining that information. And the tool I recommend for this is a tool called Notebook LM. It's a Google tool. Again, you can just go to Google, type in Notebook LM, and it's a web-based tool that comes up here. The way they position is it's your personalized AI research assistant. And it's a really good tool. If you've got information you want to read and understand, this is a great AI tool to help with that. So let me show you how this could work. You simply go by starting a notebook LM and you create a new notebook and you can upload information, documents, whatever you're trying to read. If you've got an ebook or a PDF, long form content, it's great for this. And you can upload multiple sources into one, into one notebook. So if I was to go back to this list of resources that that perplexity has come back with. There's a bunch of stuff here. I might want to go a bit deeper on one of these topic, topics. So I'm quite interested in, you know, the drug war and the FARC era. And there's a report here, for instance, the FARC and Columbia's illegal drug trade. I can simply go to that report, download it from the Wilson Center, it is. And you can see here, that's quite a detailed 28 page long form report, which would take a long time to read. So I'm going to use Notebook LM to help me consume that information more efficiently. So we go back to Notebook LM. I can just upload that report I've just downloaded. Here it is, the PDF. Add it to the notebook. And it uses that as the basis for this notebook. And as, as I say, I could add as many of those reports to the one notebook that I wanted to. Now, there's a few things Notebook LM does, which I found really helpful if you're studying. The first point is a big part of studying is reading. I remember when I was at university, much of the time was spent just reading and rereading texts. And the problem with reading is you often read information and then not remember it. But also we all have different ways of learning. And I know in my case, what I discovered is I'm actually a pretty slow reader. My reading speed is probably below average. I have done some courses in the past to try and learn how to speed read. But in general, reading for me is not the best way to consume content. Plus, I'm spending all day sitting down at a desk on the computer. I don't really want to be spending even more time sitting there reading information. So I love listening to information in audio form. That's why I love podcasts and audio books. And what Notebook LM does is it allows you to take long form content, such as that document I've just uploaded, and you can create effectively a podcast. So here it is. It's an audio overview and it has two, it'll have two hosts discussing that material that you've uploaded. So I'll go ahead and generate that. It takes a little while to generate and I'll show you what it comes back with, which is an audio version that you can then go out, walk the dog or drive your car and you can be consuming the information in that format, which for me is a much more efficient way of consuming information. In fact, whilst I struggled to learn how to speed read, what I've learned with podcasts and audio books is I've gradually increased the speed that I can listen to them in. And my default now, if I'm listening to a podcast is one and a half speed, which sounds crazy when you first listen to it, but after you've been doing it for a while, your brain adjusts. And if I now go back to normal speed, it feels quite slow. So for me, audio is a great way to get through lots of information and I find I retain it a lot better. And this is a great tool for helping with that. And the other thing I'll point out just while it's generating this, because it does take a little while to generate the audio file, you can see here, it can actually create audio overview in more languages. So if I was to take one of those Spanish resources that it found, I could put it in here and ask for a an English podcast reviewing the Spanish document, which again is pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so a few minutes later, it's come back with this audio file here. And I'll just press play on this just briefly so you can see how it works. It basically has two, two presenters, usually a male and a female one. I think you can change the settings and they'll be discussing the report in a really interactive way. Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we really try to unpack complex topics for you. Today, we're embarking on a deep dive into the, well, the profound and often tragic history of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, a better known as the FARC, and specifically, their really intricate connection to the illegal drug trade. We're drawing primarily from a pretty compelling source, the FARC in Colombia's illegal drug trade by John Otis, which came out back in November 2014. Our mission today is to really try and grasp how a guerrilla army, you know, fighting for over half a century, became so deeply tangled up with narcotics. 
and importantly, what that all means for the prospect of peace for Columbia's future and, well, for you, our listener. We'll explore how their involvement evolved, the uh, surprising economics of their drug income, and the incredibly complex road towards peace. Yeah, it's quite remarkable, isn't it, how the drug trade, which the FARC initially saw as, you know, counter-revolutionary, ultimately became the very fuel for one of the longest running conflicts in the Western Hemisphere. So you get the idea there's like two two different presenters and they're sort of talking through it in a more conversational way. And I've noticed they've now got this interactive mode where you can actually add yourself to the conversation and you can participate in the same conversation with them. So that's that's a nice new feature as well. But yeah, that's a really good way to help you read information via audio format in a more interactive way. But but there's some other really good features in Notebook LM that I really think help a lot if you're trying to study information. So I want to show you those. You can see here it can, at the click of a button, it'll do a study guide. Now, what this is, in fact, I'll go ahead and generate each of these and then talk you through them. So it does a study guide, it does a briefing doc, it can do FAQs and a timeline, and it goes away and generates those for the document or documents that you've uploaded. So let's start with the study guide. This is a really important tool. A lot of research has been done into this topic of how humans learn and retain information. In fact, there's a podcast episode Huberman did on this. If you know Andrew Huberman, he's a neuroscientist and he does really long podcast episodes where he goes really deep on topics and it's very academic. It's all research based. And he did a episode on learning protocols. I'll put a link to it in the show notes if you're interested. And he looked at, you know, the research on how to optimize your learning, everything from having the right mindset, breathing techniques, what time of day to study. But of all the research and all the reports he looked at, the number one tip was that the most important thing you can do if you want to read and retain information is to do short tests. So to test yourself on the information as soon as possible after consuming it. That one thing is the thing that can improve how much of the information you retain. In fact, I think the research showed that it halves the amount of information that you forget, which is a pretty impressive result. So these study guides are great for that because you can see what it's done here is it's come up with little short quiz to help me make sure I've understood what's in the document. And it's done 10 questions and answers. And importantly, part of what Huberman's research was showing was that whilst multiple choices are helpful, actually what's most helpful is short, open-ended questions. And that's exactly what it's done here. So, you know, question number one, describe the FARC's initial stance towards the illegal drug trade and explain why their policy changed in 1982. So the scenario is I would listen to the podcasts that I've created, and then I'll give myself a quick test to see if I've understood and retained that information. That's really going to aid your learning ability. In fact, double your ability to retain the information. So that's the study guide. The second thing it's done here is this briefing document. That's like a really good summary of what's in the document. So it's got an executive summary. It's broken it down into three sections. So if it's a really long document or lots of documents, this briefing Briefing document is a really good click of the button that can be done within Notebook LM. The third thing it's done here is the FAQ document. Again, this is really good if you are trying to learn the information yourself. Here are the common questions and answers. Or if you're then needing to teach this information, you can click there and get FAQs. Really great tool within Notebook LM. And the fourth function it offers is this timeline. So it's taken all the information in the document and summarized it into a detailed timeline. Again, a really good way of visualizing and recalling what you've read or a teaching aid if you're then needing to teach that to different info. And there's one other function here as well I'm gonna show you, which is mind map. It can generate a mind map and it's generated this mind map, which is like a visual way of viewing what's in the document. And it's interactive, you can click through and you can sort of see the different sections and the different subsections of the document. So I really, good visual aid for recalling that information. So yeah, some really good features in Notebook LM, the study guide to help you quiz yourself on the information, the briefing document, the FAQs, the timeline, the mind map visualization, and my favorite feature, which is the audio overview. Really powerful tool to help with the process of reading, 
retaining and being able to recall information and make sure you've understood it and a really great way to supercharge your ability to learn information efficiently. So I'll stop sharing there. Those are two tools that can be used to help with research, perplexity, and then reading, retaining, and understanding information using Notebook LM. Now, I should point out that this space is quickly evolving and the tools are changing and people are overtaking other companies. So it's possible that the tools are going to change and over time, those features will be baked into other AI products. But the point is that AI as a technology can be used to help you supercharge your ability to learn information. And the next step, if you've learned all that information and in it, then want to start teaching it to other people, you can start using AI to generate infographics or presentation or visual aids. And I've covered some of that in previous episodes, so I'll leave it out of this one. But for this episode, I wanted to emphasize how powerful AR can be if you're a student or someone wanting to learn information. And I think this is a great example of how AI can make you smarter and more efficient in that process. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please, as always, share it with someone else who may be interested. Like, comment below if you've got any questions. It really helps a lot. And until next week, thank you for joining me on this mission to learn more about AI. I'm Scott Davison, and this is My Way or the AI Way. Thank <laughs> you.